Well, joining me now is Megan's half-brother, Thomas Mogg. Thomas, thank you for joining me. Um, first of all, uh, how is your father, Thomas Sr.? Oh, hey, guys, it's good to be here. Um, Dad is doing very well, uh, making a lot of progress. He's in good spirits. Um, sometimes he doesn't feel that comfortable to actually make a live appearance, but uh, he's doing very well. You're there caring for him. He had a massive I'm... stroke, and I think at one stage for quite a while he lost the power of his speech. Has that returned now? Is he able to communicate with you? Yeah, his, uh, his speech is, is definitely coming back. We're making a lot of progress with the speech therapy. And, and you know, it, for the most part, it's, it's pretty normal. It just it, it goes off after a few moments, but comes back. So it, it's, he's doing very well. I'm, I'm just very happy that I could be here every day for him since, since this happened in May or, or what, about six months ago. Were you both watching the, the, the first half of this series today? Uh, let's see. I think I think he was. He wasn't able to join us, though. I mean, he really wanted to be here. Um, I was watching it, and you know, I'm just glad I had my Studio Magic tear pen with me, so I could have a tear come out of my left eye while I was watching it. I mean, that moment when Prince Harry, who's never met your father, says that Meghan has no father. What did you think of that? Uh, I think it's horrible. Um, the documentary is so far off on so many different levels, so many, it's just, it really, it's really a little bit disturbing. Um, saying that, you know, she doesn't have a family and she doesn't have a father and then Harry saying that, uh, you know, she has no father now, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's incredibly hurtful. I also have always had sympathy with your father because I felt that he was thrown to the wolves with no experience of dealing with this kind of media, intensive media attention. He tried to do the right thing, he came unstuck, and they just disowned him. Um, has she made any attempt to yeah. contact your father since he had his stroke? None whatsoever. And, you know, I totally agree with you on, on the fact that none of us were ever coached or given any help with the paparazzi or press since the very beginning, which has caused a lot of problems. Um, Nobody reached out. I actually reached out, and and all I got back was distant family, and she doesn't know us, which is just, you know, it's just very bizarre how she just basically brushed the entire family under the carpet like we don't exist and then lied about not having a family and lied about, you know, she doesn't have a family that she's always wanted. You know, we've always been here. It's... Documentary is way off. I mean, that's that's what's actually prompted me to work with my own production team, um, and coming out in like 2023, we're gonna have you know our side of the doc, uh, our side of a documentary that's gonna shed a lot of light. Well, I don't blame you. I mean, if this uh, was one of my this was one of my family doing this to, to yeah. my family, I'd want to do the same thing and set the record straight. It yes. just seems to me that she has decided you're all too big a problem. Therefore, you have to be cut loose. And I've got to be yeah. honest, I, I knew Megan for a bit before she met Harry. Did exactly the same to me. Bang, you know, done. She did that to many people that she knew, that she'd either worked with or was friends with or whatever. It just seems to me she's what I would call a ruthless social climber, who just when people are no longer, yeah. you know, no longer appropriate parts of her circle, they have to be expunged quickly so she can move on up the ladder. Absolutely. And I think a lot of greed plays into that fact also. I mean, the amount of unprecedented files, photos, videos, and documentation that, that we're going to be including in our documentary, it's going to tell a whole different story. And I think the, the, I think the general public and the UK and America knows that now the Markles aren't bad people. We're, we're just like a normal family like everybody else. We do exist. And when, when one person tells lies and then tells 10 other lies to cover the one lie and it keeps on going, you know, this is what happens. You, you, you end up looking ridiculous. There's a staggering moment, Thomas, where um, Ashley, who is, I think, your niece, who's uh, Samantha's daughter, uh, befriended Megan and was going to go to the wedding. And then Megan is apparently advised by some flunky at the palace that wouldn't be a good idea because Samantha's not invited. So this happens. How do we explain that this half-sister isn't invited to the wedding, 
but that the half-sister's daughter is. And so with Ashley, the guidance at the time was to not have her come to our wedding. I think I said I was hurt on some level, but I understood where it was coming from to know that it was because of my biological mother that this relationship that's so important to me was impacted in that way. To feel like because of her it was taken away has been hard. Yeah, actually, it was because of Megan that it was taken away. Megan could have had her there if she wanted to have her there. Instead, she wanted to have a bunch of celebrities she barely knew, from the Clooney's to the Beckham's to Elton John to James Gordon to Tim Buck too. I mean, it looked like anyone she'd met on the party circuit in the previous two years got the invite, but a lot of Harry's friends weren't there, and nor was this niece who she makes a big thing in the documentary saying we were so close. Yeah. Well, I mean, there you have it, you know. One lie turns into 20 other lies. She didn't have a family, so therefore nobody was invited. I mean, I mean, who doesn't invite their family to a wedding, right. especially a royal wedding? And it's not, like, it's not like anybody in my family asked her for one nickel or anything of her. We were all actually like happy for her when all this happened. But the slow turn of events showed the true colors of this woman. What, when you when you finish watching today the, these first three episodes, what was your kind of overview about what's happened to to Meghan and indeed what you think of Harry? Well, my general overview is I can't believe that she was able to be in this position, all by my father's doing, by the way, to be in that position and to know what you're getting yourself into. And then go in there and try and change a thousand-year-old tradition and monarchy to, to, to your own liking. Who does that? Um, it's, it's, still, it's still a big question. I mean, my father and I, we talk about it quite a bit. It's like, I, I mean, how could you even, even consider doing that? You were everything every woman in their life could ever dream of you had. And you had to go and make waves and accusations and be difficult and overall, you know, taking Harry away from his family. Right. Yeah, I'm afraid I think um, it's completely disgraceful. Like I said... Um, Thomas, I've got to leave it there. Thank you very much I mean, indeed for joining I'm, me. Please send your father my best, won't you? Because I've been concerned about him. Um, I'm glad to hear he's, he's on the mend. Absolutely. But, uh, obviously been a scary time for you and the family. Please send him my very best. Absolutely. Will do. Thank you so much for having me. All right, good to talk to you.